to the big fat quiz of the year 2006. It's like test the nation, but for drunk people who don't care how thick they are. If your family still hasn't come to blows this Christmas, simply split yourself into two teams and we'll see if we can't help you out with that. So grab yourself a pen and paper, or a crayon, if that's all you're allowed, and let's meet our teams. Team number one, a blonde bombshell with come-to-bed eyes and a body to die for, and the beautiful cat Dealey, it's Jonathan and Cat. <laughs> Team two, lock up your daughters and your sons. It's best to be safe from Little Britain. It's David Williams. <laughs> and keep an eye on the livestock while you're at it, because from Wales, it's Rob Ryden. <laughs> and finally, from the mighty Boosh, it's Noel Fielding. And from the 1870s, it's Russell Brand. Yes. <laughs> what a great lineup this year. Now, I presume you've all got uh, pub quiz team names. Cat, Jonathan, what have you thought of? Well, we, we weren't sure. We were talking beforehand, weren't we? Mm -hmm. And we, we waited until we got out there and looked at the opposition, and we've decided to call ourselves the conventionally attractive team. <laughs> because they're all... I'm sure people would find the other teams attractive, but you'd have to be... You know, it's kind of a... They're kind of like a freakish appeal down the end there. Freak? You know, yeah, freakish? Kind of like, you know, he's traditionally handsome. Who is? Russell. No, he's not. He looks like, he looks like a startled owl. Listen to the ladies. <laughs> Well, my. Noel looks. Noel, I think you look like Rod Stewart has made love to a raven. <laughs> and, and, and who is to say he hasn't? <laughs> so, that, so you're going to go for the you're conventionally go for the attractive. Conventionally attractive team. Mm -hmm. We've both talk... had a blow dry. It looks good. <laughs> Imagine my disappointment when I went to her room expecting <laughs> the offer. <laughs> <laughs> David and Rob. David and Rob, have you come up with a team name? We, yeah. yeah, we thought um, long and hard about this with a lot of phone calls and sort of thought... <laughs> we actually got some writers in and we kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we came up with Rob and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Noel and Russell, have you got a team name? Given the nature of your abuse to my teammate, I think you could be called either Ravenspawn <laughs> or Rod's Progeny. <laughs> 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 Lovely. OK, teams, and you at home, were you paying attention in 2006? Our first round is all about the events of January and February, but first, let me jog your memory. Muslims were outraged by a cartoon depicting Mohammed with a bomb as a hat. I would say, lighten up, fellas, but I'm a coward, so well done. <laughs> and Diamond was forced to quit Celebrity Fit Club for cheating. They found out she wasn't a celebrity. <laughs> Right, as Charles Kennedy says when he wakes up in the morning, it's time for round one. <laughs> OK, question number one. Eyes down. James Cracknell and Ben Fogel were in the news for rowing across the Atlantic. My question, why did they decide to do the latter half of the trip naked? <clears throat> You've got to write it down. Got it. We've got the right answer. <laughs> well done. Well, you're very good boys. Yeah. <laughs> and I noticed that the slightly cooler <laughs> team haven't written anything yet. <laughs> Busy doing their hair. <laughs> I'm suspicious of this technology, Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> no good can come of this. <laughs> no it good. Makes a mockery of the Etch a Sketch. <laughs> I don't care for it. Noel and I mistrust it. Can we just not tell you? <laughs> we'll use language. You need a quill. Here's a quill, I say. <laughs> and some parchments. <laughs> right, we're going to need some parchment and a quill. <laughs> Didn't you row the channel this year for Comic Relief? We'll come on to that later. There'll be a sort of an hour where I show you some slides, there'll be a Q&A. <laughs> OK, you all got something down for that? OK, next question, question number two. Here's an elderly man making a public apology after being discharged from hospital. Have a look. My family and I are deeply sorry for all that Vice President Cheney and his family have had to go through this past week. We send our love and respect to them. OK, what I want to know is, what was he apologising for? Mm. OK, question number three. <clears throat> the world's first face transplant was unveiled when recipient Isabel Dunois met the press to show off her new face. What I want to know is, what happened to her old one? <laughs> I like the way people can, can laugh this? at the unfortunate <laughs> no, events of this lady's life. In fairness, she is French, so... <laughs> <laughs> so fuck it, you know. <laughs> We're ready. We've done that one. Oh. OK. For the next question, it's over to those renowned current affairs pundits, Girls Aloud. Hi, Jimmy. OK. In January, what Severton Northerner brought delight 
and heartbreak to the capital by making an unscheduled trip into town. I didn't listen to that because I was just thinking about which one I'd like to sleep with the most. <laughs> and I didn't listen to what they said. Have you done an order? Well, I was doing one then. Right. But I got distracted because they started talking. <laughs> Let's move on. I'll raise the tone. Watch this clip of Pete Burns and dignified MP George Galloway on Celebrity oh, Big Brother. which order she'd like to do them in for... <laughs> <laughs> also, we got distracted by the fact that we realised that if they're not careful, they're going to look like Pete Burns in a couple of years' time. <laughs> <laughs> right, my question on that clip. Yeah. In the interpretive dance guessing game they were playing there, what emotion were they trying to convey? <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. What, what were you miming there, Cat Dealey? <laughs> the Willie Lentz go on. <laughs> Very nice when you do that, I enjoy. <laughs> Thank you very much. OK, the final question for January and February. Shelley Rudman was Britain's sole winner at the Winter Olympics, bringing home a very respectable silver. There she is in action. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's quite a lady. <laughs> but what's her sport called? Well, what's it called? Football. <laughs> Got it. There's conferring going on. OK, something. Okay. We've made a very strong start here in the middle. Well, I will be the judge of that. <laughs> Have you all got your answers down? Yes. Hold on, we're just writing our last bit. Right. There. Yes. OK, I won't keep you in suspense. I'll give you the answers to round one right now. I asked you, why did James Cracknell and Ben Fogel row the Atlantic? What have you all got? Kat and Jonathan? It's chafing because of the clothes. It's mm. my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> you've got what, sorry, David and Rob? Chafing. Chafing. And you've got... Because they were in love. <laughs> That's a beautiful sentiment. You should get there just for being romantic. Owl I guess, and the pussycat went to sea. Lovely. Oh. oh. The owl and the pussycat, of course. <laughs> it would never really work out, would it? Why? Well, you were could... talking about a raven and Rod Stewart earlier. <laughs> oh, right, no, that's a very good point well made. <laughs> Who knows what it would produce? <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I can tell you, you're absolutely right. The reason they were naked from the waist down is because of chafing. I've actually got a picture of James Cracknell's arse. This is absolutely genuine. Have a look at this. <gasps> look at that. That's it's like collapsed mine shaft. <laughs> Does that not also answer the question about the face transplant as well? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I asked you, what was the old fella apologising to Vice President Dick Cheney for? What have you got? Uh, he was shot by Dick. Dick shot him. <laughs> He was shot, they were out hunting, yeah. and he was shot, and I think you were in the, the States at the time when this mm -hmm. happened, didn't you? Mm -hmm. uh, and it was all other news over there, and, they were, and even though he was on the receiving end of the bullet, he <laughs> apologised for being so shot. sorry I was in the way. How pathetic is that? That is absolutely the right answer, though. Thank you. He was shot by Dick Cheney. You've got that right as well, have you? We Being have shot as by well. Dick. <laughs> and you've got... Yeah, we've abbreviated Dick Cheney to DC, but other than that, we're in complete concurrence with the previous teams. <laughs> this makes it difficult for us to derive humour from the situation. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of points, Jimmy, we are immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he tried to pay for the bullet as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to put you to any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I've scuffed this. I'll get you another one. <laughs> 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 Marvellous. All right, uh, next up, uh, what had happened to the face transplant lady's original face? What have you got? I think we misunderstood, because I thought you meant after they'd taken it off, what do they do with it? So I guess sold it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and, and you've gone for... Again, we're taking well, it very seriously. We're out to win. Bitten off by a dog. That is exactly... It's the age-old excuse. The dog ate it. <laughs> Let's go, if I may, to Nolan Russell and their answer. <laughs> what happened to the original face? Noel said that it's on a horse. <laughs> I was reluctant to go with him, Jimmy, but he was very confident. <laughs> he assured me that it was on a horse. Don't give him it. Don't give no, him all right, it. Because all right, they're let's... not taking it seriously. <laughs> it's whiz through. Come on, next one. Which unexpected visitor brought delight and heartbreak to the capital? 
OK, let's see what you've come up with before we go back to Girls Aloud. We, we were going to say something like Peter Kay or something like that, but we decided <laughs> that we think it's the big whale. You've got the whale stuck in the Thames? It's a very sad story. Yeah, it's a very... A whale's dark. getting stuck in the Thames. A whale, not a whale, sorry. A whale getting stuck in the Thames and people standing and supporting it, throwing water over it, wet towels, that sort of thing. Mm. But it's all to no avail, Jimmy. The uh, whale, unfortunately, perished and uh, a nation was united in grief. Even people who previously wouldn't have been too concerned about a whale, they may have <laughs> given some thought to a dolphin, which has the everlasting smile. A whale, <laughs> as we know, can be a killer. But this one killed our preconceptions, if you feel like anything. Well, I think that's best summed up, Rob. I think it's yeah. best summed up by Nolan Russell's answer, which was... It, it was that whale. <laughs> I, think, I think what Russell and Noel have done there is they've encapsulated what I've said in a, in a nice bite-sized morsel. Why are you peering at us in this fashion? It is to us, you're like rare birds. You're exotic. <laughs> we can't believe that you're sitting so tamely in your chairs. We're just trying our hardest. <laughs> we just want to get through the quiz. That's all we've ever wanted, to just be on a quiz, and now we're here. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question of, of Russell in particular? Yes, Do dear. you have any other clothes? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Rob, why have you elected to attack my apparel? I have these appurtenances. I look grand and fine and pleasant. Whereas you look like you've robbed CNA in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> now, be about your business. <laughs> Good. Well, after you finish squabbling, um, let's go back to Girls Aloud and see if that's the correct answer. A whale. <laughs> and I believe oh. they did that in the 17th take, didn't they? God <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. It was the whale coming up the Thames. I was surprised that people didn't get quite as emotional about when Jade Goody didn't quite finish the marathon, which in many ways <laughs> was a similar, similar event. Similar story, John. Yeah. <laughs> similar story. Vast creature I'm... staggering through its final moments. <laughs> OK, what were Pete Burns and George Galloway trying to convey? Any ideas? OK, well, go on. I love Celebrity Big Brother, so I watched it all. And I remember, because it was very, very moving, because they were representing the disappointment of losing a puppy and calling its name and it not coming back. That is exactly the right... How would you remember that? Because I love Celebrity Big Brother. We remember it as well, because we loved it, and we, put, we thought it was, it was bewilderment they were meant to be expressing. It was oh. bewilderment. Yes! Yes! yes. yes. How did he get... Call yourself a fan. I'll tell you how I know that, because in my house, we sky plus the episode, and that one, we put the blue button on, never to be deleted. <laughs> And there's none of your work never to be Sorry, deleted. Jonathan, you've all lost your our work, attention. All your work, <laughs> unlike never to unlike be your work, Only it's that. available on DVD. <gasps> <gasps> Some of us do well enough out of their earnings not to have to shill the public with third-rate shoddy <laughs> Christmas packages <laughs> of a live tour of old material. <laughs> Russell, you present the Big Brother Show. I imagine you got this right. What did you get? Yes, I've got it correct. It was an emotion evoked by a dog. Well, I'll tell you what, you can all have a point for that. You all got it right incredibly. Well done. <laughs> OK. Yeah. OK. What sport did Shelley Rudman win silver for? What did you all think? Cat said something? it's K something. something we thought it K. was called the Skeleton. Skeleton. Yeah. Like the Skeleton. Skeleton. She was and the only person to win a gold medal. At the, the only Australia. British medal. Yeah, she she got silver. Well, congratulations, well done. That's more yeah, is got. that a new word? Congratulations, well done. <laughs> congratulations, well done, time. kids. <laughs> People will probably be shouting that at me in the street tomorrow. Right? Congratulations, well done. Congratulations, well, well done. <laughs> you wanker. <laughs> and Nolan Russell, you've gone for. <laughs> we wrote tea tray and then in brackets futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you a point for skeleton. I, I, the correct answer is Bob Skeleton. That's a character. If we were to write, say, like a new series involving an indie detective called Bob Skeleton, it could be played by Noel really well, couldn't it? Hi, Bob Skeleton. Congratulations, well done. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be quite good. Well, mean, Bob Skeleton's a good there's name. There's been no goth detectives. We could play a sort of gothic star skin up. What mysteries off. would you investigate? Listen, you just give us 48 <laughs> hours and we'll get the job done. If we weren't so bloody miserable. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great. We'd come out of our coffins in the beginning. It'd be amazing. <laughs> Coffins slide open and we run... Well, we don't run out. Goths don't run. We'd walk slowly. The end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See our shadows across the alleyway as we sort of slowly solve crime. I would genuinely watch that. <laughs> Well, I don't know how you're doing at home, but let's have a look and see how our panellist scores are shaping up. Uh, Kat and Jonathan have five points. Come on. David and Rob have six. Nolan oh. Russell have three. Yeah. Yes.
OK, we're going to take a short break now. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. And as the Chantelle of March latches tenaciously onto the Preston of April, let's remind ourselves of some of the stories that dominated the news this spring. Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes had a child. She allegedly had to stay silent throughout the birth. Mind you, living with Tom Cruise, she's had to stay silent about a lot of things. <laughs> the tabloids describe Premiership footballers performing oral sex on each other as a prank. Other famous pranksters include Liberace, Graham Norton and the gay one out of Westlife. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's all coming back to you now, so let's have some questions. Right, round two. A clinical trial went tragically wrong. In the horrific aftermath, what did the girlfriend of one of the volunteers say her stricken boyfriend looked like? Well, I don't understand what just happened. You were, tell <laughs> well, ask the question. You were telling some lovely jokes, and then suddenly Noel and I were put under inconceivable pressure. <laughs> what? what have we done? <laughs> OK, next question. In March, Isaac Hayes quit his role as chef in South Park. In anger over an episode entitled Trapped in the Closet, which mocked his fellow Scientologist friend Tom Cruise. The episode also parodied and took its title from the remarkable hip hoppera by which R&B star? Oh. Yes. So which R&B star? Oh. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. I know it. Well, write it down. I know what, it. What? 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 Tell, tell your dad yeah. and then write it down. <laughs> It does, it's the hip hop. It's the hip hop, granddad. The hip hoppy. <laughs> Not the hip hop, the hip hop. <laughs> Jonathan, I take no pleasure in this, but fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have a look at this quote from The Sun's editorial column. Having dumped an alcoholic, shunned a rent boy botherer, and rejected a liar, they settled for a man who looks ready to retire. What were they talking about? Oh, oh! <laughs> don't blurt don't it out. I know it. Don't blurt it out. I know it. I've just got it. Say nothing. Say nothing. Say nothing. All right, next question. Cool. Rock legend Keith Richards was hospitalised after a bizarre accident. I know. What was it? I oh. know. I know what it is. Shut up. <laughs> I know. I don't. You don't have to tell me. I know it. We're working as a team. I know the answer. I don't need to know it from you. Well, write it down. I can't write it down. You're leering over me as if I'm a model. <laughs> I don't want to go to your bed. Now stop it. Can I just say, Cat and Jonathan, you're being very good this round. Well done. Cat's yeah. very keen to win. She's very, very uh, underneath that glossy and let's face it, primped and pampered and yes, waxed. Exterior. <laughs> There's a fearfully ambitious young woman who wants to take home the prize tonight. The big silver trophy and the £500,000. That is still on, right? Sorry, you lost yeah. me at wax. Right. <laughs> I'm still very much there. Okay. That's a, that would be in the porn version of Joey Maguire, wouldn't it? You had me at wax. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money shot. <laughs> <laughs> that was good of him to do. OK, next question. If you've seen the Big Fat Quiz of the Year before, you might remember the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neesden, who shun the traditional nativity play in favour of a more topical subject matter. What news event are they acting out here? I am here at the Big Film Premier and Hero of Stars. Do you think the film will be popular? Yes, because lots of people read the book. It's man who wrote the book. Hello. <laughs> but it's just like our book. We are very cross. <laughs> is he a copycat? No! no. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Mitchell Brook Primary School there. The question is what news event are they talking about? Can we go through the answers? Because I'm pretty confident it's another full house for us. Ooh. Ooh. It's really horrible. Okay, you, ever, since you, ever since you swam the Red Sea, you've become so smug. <laughs> Sorry, you'd like me to call you a lady? <laughs> she thinks that's his catchphrase. She's big in America. She doesn't care about a little Dick Emery show. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, I asked you, how was one of the clinical trial victims described by his girlfriend? What did you all get? Elephant man. Jimmy Carr. <laughs> now, we, then we put Elephant Man because we do actually want the points. <laughs> now, what we've done there is we've put Jimmy Carr, Elephant Man. 
It's like we're telling you the answer. Well done, Rob. All right. Give it to him. Hang on, what? Well, what happened here, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you have offended us, thus we have decided to subvert your quiz. <laughs> Oddly, Noel did give the correct answer, the Elephant Man, but in a boy who cried wolf scenario, I thought he's being daft. <laughs> <laughs> from now on, I'm just going to steward this young man for a difficult quiz. <laughs> I'll tell you the answer. OK. She described him as looking like the elephant man, although Wayne Rooney's girlfriend, Colleen, described him as quite a catch. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next question. Who wrote the original Trapped in the Closet? What did you have? We went with R. R. Kelly. Kelly. We had R. Kelly as well. You got it right as well, R. Kelly? Yeah. Do you want to have a look? Yeah. Yes. Let's have a little look. Yeah, let's have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he walks over to the refrigerator and pushes it back. And then he looks her in her face, looks like she's about to have a heart attack. Then he notices the pie on the counter, one slice is missing. Now the story's getting scary, cause he comes to realize that Bridget is allergic to cherries. And then he says, move, she says, no. He says, move, she says, no. Then she moves, she moves. And then he looks at the cabinet. He walks to the cabinet, get close to the cabinet. Now he's opening the cabinet. Now pause the movie, cause what I'm about to say to y'all is so damn twisted. Not only is there a man in his cabinet, but the man is a midget. <laughs> The amazing thing about it is he's absolutely genuine. He's taking that totally seriously. I find it goes that, on for I hours. Find it both moving and powerful. That's <laughs> what I want from an opera. I don't think there was a midget in there because that's where the bin goes underneath. There. <laughs> There's no room in there. Okay. What were the son talking about when they said, having dumped an alcoholic, shunned a rent boy botherer, and rejected a liar, they settled for a man who looks ready to retire? What did you all have? We had the um, Liberal Democrat Leadership Challenge. It's, yeah, it was the Lib Dem Leadership. What did you put? Well, we put the process of selection for this quiz. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm afraid I can't give you a point for that. Oh, we're being victimised here. <laughs> it was very funny, though. We all laughed and we liked it. In a way, that's reward enough. <laughs> OK. We've lost our pen now. Well, no, that pen was holding us back. <laughs> you see, it was crippling us. It's gone in the gap. Oh, there's a gap. <laughs> says, on the truth, mind the gap. I've always ignored it. Now the gap's a bit back. <laughs> you get it. God bless the goths. OK. Um, OK, this is, uh, this is your specialist subject. Why was Keith Richards hospitalised? We know this one. We know it, and also there's an illustration. <laughs> so, if that doesn't get us bonus points, Jimmy... If you put on bonus like points! Mandarin. You've all got it right. Keith Richards fell out of a coconut tree. Yes. Was That's he even in a tree, though? I think someone... He was, he's an old fella. He fell asleep in a hammock. Someone, for a joke, lifted him up and dropped him. It's an awful joke. <laughs> it was Ronnie, wasn't it? <laughs> Ronnie Wood and Mick Jagger lifted him up and dropped him <laughs> they from tried a nearby branch. Him. Right? And then when he woke up, he said, What happened, man? What happened? Where? And they went, You. Yeah, this is Jagger. Whoa, man, yeah. You up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's my man? Well, yeah, Ronnie Wood went, Yeah, that's what you were doing, this jam. <laughs> went, oh, I'm not doing it. That's Jagger. And then he went, Oh, man, go to Westwood then. And then Jagger went, yeah, I'm going out. And then they went on tour and they met one shirt and he went, yeah, what's going on? What's that? I heard something happened to Keith. And he went, yeah, who's over there? Michael Jackson went, ooh, yeah, what happened to Keith? <laughs> and they all just went on that for about an hour. <laughs> this is one of the, the, the nation's finest entertainer, Jonathan Ross, there. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Yarwood's back, eh? And this is me. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Which story were Mitchell Brook Primary School uh, acting out? What, what have you got? Kat, you got this straight away. To Da Vinci Code, Dan Brown. I think to get the point, you really do need to use the word plagiarism. We've put it on there. We've put it on there. Look yeah, above oh, there. Look, it says so plagiarist crazy. claim, Dan Brown. All oh, right, Vinci fine. Code. And fine. The, these two boys have just written Da Vinci. Well, yeah. They can't win you on can't, Da Vinci. You can't give them that. You can't give them that. Why not? Because, because it's a plagiarism case, and that's the whole point of it. Yeah, but I think they I knew can, what we cause... meant. No, it Jimmy, could have please been... help us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can mark the kids in, in special needs in the same way as you mark the other kids. <laughs> I don't think that would be fair either, so I'm going to give them a point for that. They've done very well. Are they getting the bonus point? No, there's no bonus point for the tree. Hey, Jimmy, because I'll walk if they get the bonus point. <laughs> please give them the bonus point. <laughs> You're not gelling as a team, you two. 
Give me if this. You shan't be allowed to sit together next year. But don't. Could you just... stop putting your I arm didn't in front get... of my face? <laughs> like a whole bloody show like this. <laughs> Jimmy, Russell's met Keith, and he told him in person what happened. So we should get a bonus point for that. Go on. What, what did he tell you? He said the best way to express what happened to me is through some sort of drawing. <laughs> A, that's a coconut at the end, it's or it could be Keith's skull being x-rayed <laughs> And that is the tree uh, within the center of the drawing. It's very accurate. I can't see the draw. I can't, I can't. Oh, yeah, it's definitely there. Have a look <laughs> It's not, well, this rubbish. It. It's, not <laughs> even, it's not even artistic That's the tree! <laughs> you can't get a point for that! David, no! I don't even feel like a teacher. <laughs> Quickly! I've got confused for Swim across something! Swim something! Suppress the homosexuality! Swim something! Now you're all to sit down. Let's have a quick look at your scores while you're getting yourselves comfortable. Kat and Jonathan have ten points. David yeah. and Rob are in the lead with eleven points. Oh. Noel and Russell are holding up the rear with six. And now it's time for the first of our special bonus questions. And to ask it, the king and queen of the jungle, Matt Willis and Mylene Klass. Hello, Matt. Come on in. Hello, thank you very much. See you. Hello, mate. Matt. You all right? Nice to see you. Look at that. Hello. I've seen them on telly. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just say something? Yes, um, you may. Mylene and I have something of a history. Um, are you referring to the fact that we walked past each other this morning? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we did. In, in Soho, in we Soho. walked past each other and I went, well done. And, and she went, went, thanks, mate, and went by. <laughs> she thought you were a member of member the public. Member of the public, That's I know. That's why she said no. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some guests. Let's stop quibbling Let and squabbling. Speak. Get your arm well, down. Let them speak. <laughs> Let them speak. <laughs> <laughs> Sit there. Then I'm you not, do, no, you my sit, name is here. Sit there. I'm not, my name is you, here. No, I don't want people tuning in to go, I'm you. Sit there. Sit there. Sit down. 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 It's not funny anymore. Sit down. Let us speak. Right, okay, calm. Calm, everyone. Right, let's ask you some questions. For, you've got to congratulations, first of all. <laughs> Thank you very much. On your victory in the jungle. And you were the queen of the jungle. That's sort of a victory, isn't it? That counts. Thank Many you. people were obsessed by your bikini. I was, of course, more interested in what was underneath. <laughs> I see beyond that. Thank you. Can I ask, how many showers did you take a day? Matt, what do you reckon? See, see uh, I've heard all this, yeah, but thanks. actually, she probably showered as much as us. But if you'd rather see... What would you rather see, Mylene or me or David Guest? <laughs> so you probably show Mylene showering. What, did you shower so... with David Guest? Many, many a <laughs> time. Now, what was the most difficult thing about being in the jungle for you? I really enjoyed it, really. You hate the flies. I think, yeah. um... Well, you like flies, do you? They <laughs> <laughs> got our flies? Can't believe our luck. Well, they all kind of around for some reason. They just kind of left me alone. Right, now, you've got a question for our lovely oh, panelists yes, here. Yes, we have. We okay. have. Are okay. you ready? Yes. yes. Can I, can I just ask, Jonathan, are you going to be trying to answer this question? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see. We haven't seen much of you, but that's nice. <laughs> have but we will try and answer. OK. Right, we're going to show you three clips from Matt's amazing Bush Tucker trial. Uh, and we'd like you to tell us which animal part I am eating <coughs> in each one. Oh. Easy. OK. Watch carefully, because you need to get all three of them in the right order oh. in order to get the bonus points. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, right now. Have you all got your answers written down? Yes. Yes. Let's have a look and see what they put. Okay, you've got <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Pat and Jonathan. Pat and Jonathan had anus. Cock and balls. <laughs> David Williams and Rob Ryden went for penis, testicles, anus. <laughs> Not Phil and Russell Brand. What have you gone for? <laughs> Wine gums. <laughs> envy. Um, and then we finished that off with pieces of rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> let's, let's have a check. Let's have a look. We've got crocodile eyes. A kangaroo anus. <laughs> A crocodile's penis. 
you'd be relieved to hear you don't have to eat the whole thing. You just have to bite it off at the base. <laughs> now, when you came home, did your girlfriend say, I don't want to kiss you for a while? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, it, even all of my mates, I walked down my local pub and they've all got pictures of me on their T-shirts with butt munch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is... They find very amusing. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. they've had those for years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for entertaining us in the jungle. Thanks very much for coming on. Round of applause. Man, Marlene, everyone. Thank you so much. Now, how much do you remember about the music of 2006? I'm about to put you in the capable hands of a man who's busted more rhymes than Jay-Z. It's Channel 4 News' Jon Snow with some special news reports based on the lyrics of this year's biggest hits. Which song is Jon talking about here? Ten years after conducting a controversial study into the depths of people's love, four researchers from Manchester have come out of retirement to answer a new question. Just how do we recover from a broken heart? The answer? Simply by waiting. Understandably, the claim has been dismissed by some sceptics, including Stoke-based practitioner Dr Robert Williams. The group, however, were adamant that emotional scars would definitely be healed by a combination of perseverance and ti i i i i am <laughs> Jon Snow in an area one time. <laughs> but what was he referring to? What song was he referring to? Get it down? You all written it down? Yes. OK, do you know the answer? Yes. What is the answer then, Take David? Take that patience. Sing us a little bit of it. No, there's the only bit I know is I, 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 I like you very much. <laughs> <laughs> We put down patience, but we could we didn't know whether it was patience like I'm patient and waiting or patience like they should they've just come out of hospital. The machine's broken. This has turned uh, against us. But did you know the answer? That hasn't That's broken. Yes. If you keep pulling it like that, Can it will I break. Strike whatever they've got and let's well, let's give them another let them go. Don't let do it now because the, we've no, already said what the right answer is. <laughs> it's about the pop charts. Of course they'll fucking know. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know real music. They've probably done a picture or something. We have done a picture. <laughs> OK. Nolan Russell, you've gone for Jon Snow <laughs> ruins news. <laughs> Let's hear a little bit of Take That. Just try. Hey, Sean. Let's break the seat. Jimmy. You were so, you were so like middle management. <laughs> That's really scary when you do that. A bit lovely, I like though. it. They are lovely, aren't they? they? Are Back well. for Good is one of the best songs of the 90s, OK? Your if anyone says that it isn't, I'm walking. <laughs> Somebody, please. All I'm saying <laughs> is... <laughs> Back to, Back to Jon Snow for another new style pop lyric. A lifetime observer of the United States has revealed that the country has exhibited an unrelenting pattern of mayhem and conflict. The commentator also drew attention to a media blackout this morning, with nothing on the TV and nothing on the radio, apparently that we can believe in. In a statement that acknowledged the civil upheaval, a White House spokesman commented, ah, oh, oh, there is unrest in the USA. <laughs> of course. What song was he talking about there? David Williams seems to have the answer. You've got your keen little hand up. Razor light, America. Why don't you shout it out so everyone can get it? <laughs> I thought that was you saying that's what... I thought you wanted the answer! <laughs> you hadn't worked out how it's worked yet? No, because you... Because you said, what is the answer? <laughs> they didn't have it and they've written it they down did. now! <laughs> OK, what have you all got? Raise the light, America. David and Rob we, got that right. We were waiting cables running up that hill because we went, ah, or, or, I thought we said, and then we guessed correctly, Raise the light, America. We did not! <laughs> what have you gone for, we did a, Look, we've had a drawing of Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> and you've gone for... And then we wrote, I have learned. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Jon Snow doing this? Where is the proper news? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's hear a little bit of Raise the light. Let's check in on the scores. Kat and Jonathan have 12 <laughs> points. David and Rob are in the lead with 13. Yes. Nolan Russell are holding up the rear once again with six. <laughs> Join me after the break when, if you've forgotten, we'll be finding out if England won the World Cup. <laughs> Well, 
Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2006. It's looking distinctly sunny outside, so as the receding hairline of May becomes the unconvincing comb-over of June, let's remind ourselves of what go on. <laughs> Fathers for Justice protesters stormed the National Lottery Show. The plan was to surround Eamon Holmes, but there were only eight of them. <laughs> Can you stop throwing sweets during Can my... Can I say I didn't throw any? It was Russell Brand, <laughs> brain of Jonathan Holmes. OK? Who's the only... <laughs> oh! Right. That really, no, because that really, that actually really hurt. No, because that actually, that actually really hurt. And Kat. I could have been, I could have been blinded. I could have been blinded by a quality street. Cat Dealey. Cat Dealey. Cat Kiss it better. Kiss it better. Go on, kiss it better. He's still doing it. And he's <laughs> going to throw that one at me. He's just trying to get a kiss. Oh. <laughs> could you just throw one at my nuts? <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm getting behind this. <laughs> Me and Russell will kiss a testicle each if you want. <laughs> <laughs> They're too small, you won't be able to get in at the same time. We could pull them quite taut like that. <laughs> <laughs> then it'll be like Lady in the Tramp. We'll go. <laughs> 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 All right, let's do it. You're okay, sorry. No, stop it. <laughs> you saucy mate, you. Yeah. We've all had a laugh. Let's get back to the jokes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Each country came up with a slogan for the World Cup. England's was one nation, one trophy, 11 lions. Now, I've checked and we're not allowed to play 11 lions, but if we had, we would have definitely won. <laughs> Germany's slogan was for Germany, through Germany, or through Poland, if history is anything to go by. <laughs> My favourite was Spain's. One nation, one goal. <laughs> One goal, make an effort, Spain. <laughs> right, are you all ready for some questions? Yes. 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 Of course yes. you are. Bring them on. <laughs> Have a look at this clip. What are these people celebrating? I can't believe this. This is so amazing. Yeah, I feel like I'm in sleep. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's one in a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the mighty Bush announced tour dates in Europe. <laughs> the crowd go wild. Can, now, can we have a clue? Yes, you can. Oh, no, no. Oh. He said yes, he's let's in charge, it. not you. Let's ask, the, <laughs> let's ask the disadvantaged children. Do you think they should have a clue? I think, yeah, let them have a clue. Just let's be nice to one another. Always. <laughs> yeah. He says that and then you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next question. The Queen celebrated her 80th birthday, but while greeting the crowds from the palace balcony, the royal family momentarily lost their composure. What was said to have given them the giggles? We're just chatting about our lives. <laughs> We've got a lot in common, I think, you know. We're, we're, just... we're stuck together with hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> Write something down, Russell and Noel. Have a bit of a guess. OK, third question. What feature guaranteed Niles Barkley's single, Crazy, a place in musical history? <laughs> <laughs> they are genuinely discussing where to buy jeans in Camden Lock. <laughs> <laughs> what we were saying was that that man's called Danger Mouse, isn't he? But his real name is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was quite funny. Quite <laughs> when Brian's a bit of shit, I'll change it to Danger Mouse. <laughs> it would be difficult to think how that nickname could arrive naturally, unless you had the qualities of a mouse and were constantly in danger. <laughs> <laughs> then people would go, we may just as well call you Danger Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Circumstance dictates. <laughs> OK. This year's book charts were dominated by the autobiographies of some of our most beloved young reality TV chavs. But which one was the author of the following extract, presented here as is only fitting, by Sir Ian McKellen? Chapter 6. Do you think the camera saw us? The thing I've never lived down is stripping off to my La La, or Lulu. I call it both names, depending on my mood. We were all playing a drinking game where you had to say a celeb's name and then the next person had to start the next celeb's name with the first initial of the previous one, surname, or something like that. Anyhow. 
Whatever the rules were, I didn't understand them properly, hence I ended up starkers. Like a donut, I got everything wrong and had to pay the penalty. I split my best pair of white jeans when I was in the house. Forget the nakedness. I think that was my most embarrassing moment ever. I ripped a pair of trousers at the pump crack on national television. <laughs> I ripped right on the arse too. I just thought, oh my God, these are my nicest trousers from French Connection. I love these trousers. And now I've ripped them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Ian McKellar. I tell you what, he's got some incredible voice, hasn't he? Even he brings a bit of dignity to that. <laughs> OK, so whose autobiography was that from? I love hearing Gandalf saying, I, I ripped my best white jeans from oh French God. Connection. <laughs> <laughs> now take the ring and destroy it. <laughs> of course, the news this summer was dominated by the World Cup. Let's remind ourselves of the ups and downs of Germany 2006. <laughs> OK, here's the question. Beckham's boys were not the only Brits to leave the party early. Prominent referee Graham Pohl was sent home in disgrace. Why? I know it. I, I don't know it. Know it. Uh, because I it's know about it. football. I don't know. I know it. You don't know it. Look at these two. Yeah. <laughs> you, like, you like football. You like football, Russell, because you support a football team. Oh, that's right. I'm actually quite good at football. What football team do you support? I support West Ham United, David. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> This is an happy occasion. <laughs> Let's look beyond the divisions of football teams and look at the unifying force within us all. I think I... Sex! <laughs> no, I... <don't... laughs> Can I just say we finished our answers quite a long time ago? <laughs> <laughs> And we're you, kind of ready to move on with the next round. You can say that, but it won't make you very likeable. <laughs> People are loving these guys coming from behind. They're going to come back and win. You'll see. They're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> I've got faith in Noel and Russell. They know yeah. loads of stuff. We do. We will persevere. We'll just press on, shan't we, Noel? Yeah. Come on, then. Now, what does this do? <laughs> <laughs> it goes in the hole. Well, pop it in, then, and hopefully we'll get a prize. <laughs> not the first time he said that. <laughs> Jimmy! <laughs> OK. Right, right, OK, time up. First one. What oh. were all those Finnish people celebrating? What have you written? Jonathan, winning the Eurovision. It was Lordy winning oh. the Eurovision oh. for Finland. Finland. OK, what have you got, David and Rob? Lordy winning Eurovision. <laughs> what have you actually written? That's Welsh for Lordy winning... <laughs> okay. OK, we got an answer wrong, OK? What, what did you actually we're put, big enough. We're big enough to admit that. Yeah. Well, I didn't know, because I... I thought it could be something to do with the football thing that was happening. <laughs> and I thought it may be that Sweden had scored a goal. <laughs> and that they were celebrating that. OK, I got it wrong. I'm big enough to admit that. <laughs> well, let's move to Nolan Russell. <laughs> we put the new cheese shipment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you got it right. It was, of course, uh, the celebrations after Lordy <laughs> won the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Let's see them in action. Hard rock. The winners of the 51st Eurovision Song Contest, Finland! Look at his flowers. Oh. Lordy there. The winners of the Eurovision Song Contest, they model themselves on Bucks Fizz as they look now. <laughs> <laughs> what made the royals lose their composure? Let's see your answers. Prince Philip farting. <laughs> this is the one we went for the polite royal use of the word made wind. <laughs> made wind? What did you go for, guys? Actually, we put constant mouse peril. For this, <laughs> <laughs> this Jimmy was a reference to a later question. Can I say? <laughs> In a way, we've been incredibly perspicacious, and like Nostradamus before us, we ought to be rewarded. <laughs> can I say, you can put a line through those answers now, because they're all wrong, because you've put them in the wrong boxes. So just put a line yeah. through them, OK? <laughs> this round, you got no points, OK? But we do know it. She, someone did a guff in there, and they all laughed. Yeah, but that's too late, because we've already said that. 
It's very cynical of you, David, to assume that Noel and I would cheat when we've been naught but gentlemen since we arrived here today. <laughs> <laughs> if you got another clue, you can whistle for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get a clue. There was no clue. Oh, OK, so you all put, you put Prince Philip made, made wind. wind. You've got Prince Philip farted. Yeah. That's absolutely right. We've got some photos to demonstrate. Have a look at this. That's the first photo there. There's a smirk. Second one. <laughs> it's, it's, he smelt it. Oh, <laughs> he's gone. I tell you what I love about that is, like, the one who moves the least is the Queen because she's received that so many times. <laughs> she's been on the end of a royal duvet wafting more than once, isn't she? <laughs> And Charles has perked up because he thinks some organic sausages have been opened up. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that Princess Anne's come as a pirate. <laughs> That's it, my mum's 80, I'm a pirate. <laughs> okay, OK, next one. How did Crazy get into the record books? What have you come up with? Cat knew this. It's the first number one from Downloads. Oh, yep. Oh, we first do number that one from downloads. That's the correct answer. Cat Dealey, Jonathan Ross, David Williams, Rob Brighton. Yes. You all get points. Right, yeah. These boys don't get a point, Good. but well done. Good. It's a lovely little picture. I think you should give up, boy. Come on, let's, let's hanker down. Oh. Um, which literary <laughs> masterpiece was Sir Ian reading from? Your answers? Well, I thought probably Jade's autobiography. Cat said she hasn't read anything solo when, and she thought maybe it was Stephen Hawking's book. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was a big shopper at French Connection. <laughs> we, think it's, uh, we think it's Jade... Jade Goody. It's well, definitely we put Jade, Jade Goody. We put Jade. We put Jade, Jade as well. Noel and Russell. We put, he's simply expressing his own views. <laughs> <laughs> right, and the reason we know that is because he never once glanced down at the book. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, uh, uh, let's go back to Serene for the correct answer. That was an extract from the memoirs of Jade Goody. Off of Big Brother. <laughs> That's pretty classy, isn't it? <laughs> Off of Big Brother. OK. Why was Graham Pohl sent home early? What did you think? Well, he made one of the biggest misdemeanours in refereeing history. He gave two yellow cards. And, of course, really, that should be... Once you've got a yellow, you get another one. That's a red. You're off. So the player stayed on when he should have gone off. And this is unprecedented in the history of uh, refereeing. Incorrect. Three yellow cards instead of a red. <laughs> Cat got it right. Cat knew it and Cat said three yellow cards. Cat really got, got it right. right. More impressive than that, the fancy yeah. lady men. Yeah. Wow! This is question five. <laughs> this is question five, which is blank. Therefore, no point. <laughs> 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 Here now. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm not going to kiss it, David. <laughs> <laughs> At the risk of David Williams walking, you definitely get the point. Well done. Congratulations, boys. Yes, it was, of course, the, uh, the referee, Graham Pohl, was sent home because he gave uh, three yellow cards to one player in one match, which is a disgraceful thing to do. I've never heard the like. Right, and how are the scores looking at this point? Cat Dealey and Jonathan Ross have 17. David Williams and Rob Ryden have 16. Oh, yeah. Nolan Russell have an impressive yeah. seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> now for our next bonus round, I've got a special guest coming on Ooh. who was in the news this year. You can only ask him yes or no questions, and all you have to do is tell me who he is. So will you please welcome our mystery guest? Hello, sir. Hey there. Now, don't say your name, obviously. That'd be crazy. Right. Very nice to have you here. Yeah. You're a fine figure of a man. Panellists, you are allowed to ask him yes or no questions. Are you a man? <laughs> are you Jimmy Carr's father? No. Do you buy your suits at the same shop? No. Do you like ice cream? <laughs> Someday. Excuse me? No, when we said you could ask them questions, do you like ice cream? You're not trying to make friends. <laughs> You're trying to work out who he is. And even if you were trying to make friends, do you like ice cream? Is a little bit retarded. <laughs> yeah, but I know some people who don't, so it was a process of elimination. Jimmy, we saw this yeah. man in the corridor earlier. He's yeah. the man from the corridor. Yeah. <laughs> and I love him. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. <laughs> in the corridor. Have you all guessed? Yeah. We've guessed. You've got a good idea who this man is? Yeah, yeah we know. OK. 
Let's have a look at the answers. Kat Dealey and Jonathan Ross, what did you go for? Well, I've got to be honest with you, we do have a slight uh, unfair advantage here because this gentleman came on my show. <laughs> <laughs> you put down Guy Goma, who was the man... You, you were working as a driver, weren't you, sir, I believe? And you got um, dragged into an interview on apples and the impact of downloading on, on iPods and sort of hacking on, was it BBC News 24? Exactly. Yeah. So, hold on a second, David. Did I get that one? No, because I heard uh, you'd uh, gone for a job interview and you went on News 24 by accident. Is that correct, sir? Correct. Correct. Well, hold so on. What is the truth? <laughs> you can handle it. What is the truth? <laughs> Don't worry about this, that <laughs> nonsense about Apple Mac. That was rhubarb. What we need to establish is, was that you in the corridor? We saw you, we instantly thought you were the kind of fella who might like a bit of a cuddle. <laughs> Once we'd established that, it was on with the quiz. Our primary goal in life is to win this quiz, a goal we are sure we can achieve. <laughs> Let's have a look at you in action. So what does this all mean for the industry and the growth of music online? Well, Guy Cuny is the editor of the technology website uh, News <laughs> Wireless. Hello, good morning to you. Good morning. Were you surprised by this uh, verdict today? I'm very surprised to see this verdict to, to come on, on me because I was not expecting that. When I came, uh, they told me something else and I'm coming. You, you got an interview there, so it's a big surprise. Isn't it? <laughs> a big surprise. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You were very surprised. Very surprised when I was there. When did you realize? Because it looks like you only just realized when you were sat in there, you thought, well, this is a job interview <laughs> with cameras. Can we have a look at that moment again, just when he realizes? <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> and then the lip goes. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Now, I read in the papers that there's plans to make a Hollywood film of your life. Is that true? Is it true? They're making... Uh, they're going to have a movie maybe next year. Can Noel and I play ourselves in the corridor scene? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming in, ladies and gentlemen. Guy Goma. Right, well, it's time for us to take another quick break. See you in a minute. Hello, <laughs> and welcome back to the big quiz of the year 2006. <laughs> Let me just remind you about July and August. No, he's not doing the gags. Fuck off. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. I'm sorry, but he was better than you. Guy had something. <laughs> he had a warmth and compassion that Jimmy lacks. <laughs> he had an offbeat delivery. I loved it. <laughs> I like Guy. He had a, I he miss had a, Guy. Yeah. Where's Guy? He's got a lovely little face. He was really yeah. smiley and friendly. We felt warmed by him. He had a vibe, I'd call it a vibe. Did you think he was Why have you sexy? usurped Guy? <laughs> <laughs> Big bad guy. Big bad guy. Guy, guy, guy. Bad guy. Just whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you can all fuck off. <laughs> News just in. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's talk about July and August. Big Brother's Nikki confessed that she used to be an escort. It was £50 for a blowjob, £100 for straight sex and a grand to get her to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and Conservative Party leader David Cameron suggested we hug a hoodie. Why stop there? Tickle a rapist, wank off a mugger. <laughs> OK, on to the questions. Yes, we're ready. I don't want to play with you anymore after you were so mean to me. Oh. I was the Take nicest to you. <laughs> <laughs> People hate you. You've got to get used to that. <laughs> okay. In this picture, huh? why has Sienna Miller swapped her Prada for a plastic bag? Yeah. Write down your answer. Oh. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't help wondering how Guy would have phrased that question. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have ended it with a big smile and we'd all have felt included in the mirth. <laughs> and the great thing with Guy, you don't see him popping up on every other bloody show. 
Yeah, I, he does a lot of voiceover work, though, doesn't he, Rob? <laughs> so shoot me. <laughs> squirt for squirt, Fairy cleans more dishes than any other liquid. <laughs> <laughs> Too late for a comeback. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Guy would have had a zinger ready. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What on earth was Peter Sissons discussing when he said this? Stop doing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what he was discussing. He was being picked on when people said Guy Gomer was better than him. <laughs> For this question, I want you to take a look at this picture and say what you see to find the new story, OK? I'll give you an example first. Have a look at this. Can you work out what that is? It's just an example question. Cat Dealey? Cat Dealer? Cat Dealey, yeah. Swallows. E. e. Bum Bum Flag. Not, <laughs> not Bum Bum Flag. Cracks America. <laughs> Cat Dealey Cracks America. so beautifully, thank you very much. You might want to get that made into a T-shirt. <laughs> now, here's, here is your question. Have a look at this. Say what you see. Couldn't be easier. Don't shout out if you know it. No, Russell? Yes. yes. Quick, write something. OK. Statue. William. William. I think I know this one. <laughs> Worked out. Ladies and gentlemen, don't shout out if you know. Have you got that? Yes, we've got it. <laughs> and for our next question, it's over to rock goddess Courtney Love. Hello, Jimmy. Which big British organization decided this year that size really does matter? <laughs> British, British organization decided size really Which organization decided size mattered? Um, oh, that's quite Can we hard. have a little, just a little clue for everyone? Noel and I are very confident that we know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Very confident. Yeah. Almost complacent. <laughs> Arrogant, even. Could we have a clue? And could Let it be just read by producer? Guy? And it... <laughs> <laughs> it's a big official organisation in the UK. Huge organisation. There's one in every town, city and village in the country. They're oh, all over yeah. the place. Oh, yes. Oh. You... Cat's got it. Oh. Oh. Um, Cat's got it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Which star hit the headlines <laughs> after enjoying a romantic night out with this pouting 58-year-old van driver. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. This is the easiest round yet. Oh, I like just... his stance. The one hand on one leg with this, like him. OK, let's find out how you did. OK, why did Sienna Miller have all her stuff in a plastic bag? <laughs> what have you got? Airport Jonathan security, because you can only take so much through with you in hand. Airport luggage. security is a succinct and correct answer. David and Rob, what did you have? Uh, Airport security measures, in brackets, new. <laughs> <laughs> Not as succinct, but still correct. OK, what did you have, Nolan Russell? We wrote red orb contained within. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the photo, it's very clearly a red orb. It was, of course, because of the restrictions imposed after police foiled an air terror plot involving liquids in hand luggage. Yeah. Luggage? <laughs> I'll do that again without saying luggage. Guy Gomer would have done it brilliantly. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Why did Peter Sissons say a bad word? <laughs> he was... Sure. We think he was quoting uh, President Bush in that overheard, over-recorded conversation between uh, Bush and Blair when he Talking was... about Syria, and he was talking to Tony Blair, and from our point of view, being British people, the bad thing was he was kind of talking down to Blair. I'm sorry to be smirking through this, but I've just skipped ahead to Nolan Russell's answer. <laughs> <laughs> Which was? He is angry. <laughs> He's expressing this anger through saying some words. <laughs> that is his right as a man. We're going to get the pen confiscated in a minute. <laughs> the, the, the saddest thing about this is you are... I know you're doing your best. <laughs> Jimmy, this is a difficult situation. Go and ask Guy what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's left now. He's doing eight out of ten cats next door. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Judas! And then Hang on, on Guy wouldn't have shouted Judas West at the audience. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Why did Peter Sisson say a bad word? Uh, yes, he was discussing the moment at the G8 summit when George Bush was caught off guard with his microphone on while regaling Tony Blair with these brilliantly complex insights into foreign policy. Have a look. President Bush, meanwhile, has been caught on microphone using an expletive as he discussed Hezbollah's rocket attacks on Israel. 
Everybody's like, oh, just cool. See, the irony is that what they need to do is get serious and get headbutts and just stop doing the shit and it's all over. Yeah. But you know what is wrong there? You don't need to hear him say it again. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have to. Really enjoy it, he really he? he said, no, I think I should repeat it just in case people didn't hear it. I bet he was practicing all night at home going, yeah, I'm gonna say shit on the news. <laughs> <laughs> Big moment. Um, okay. Number three was our say what you see question. What did you all get? This is about the man sitting next to me. <laughs> David, did you get this? I did get it, yeah. What was it? Wally Arms Crosses Channel. David Williams, Rob Bryden, you get a point there. Thank well you. done. Because we put David Bricks to Liam's Graveyard 4, which is, <laughs> I think, an equally valid answer if you actually to interpret the rules of the game correctly as opposed to just play favourites because he happened to get pushed over the channel by a boat and then pretend he swam it for charity. Lardy Dar Gunner Graham going over like that. All right, what did you get, Nolan Russell? Well, we put the Walliams tricks a nation into believing he ain't gay by swimming across a channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you definitely get a point for that. Well done. Yay. This is absolutely well. Of course, it's true. That's right. Our very own David Williams swam the channel for comic relief in an amazing ten and a half hours. David Williams, everyone. <laughs> Have you noticed that the, uh, the goth's entirely unimpressed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think that's a challenge? Squeeze into those jeans. <laughs> right, OK, next question. Who decided that size really does matter? Any ideas? The BMP. <laughs> Against tall people. BMP could say, right, we're going to include our hate <laughs> against the tall, or maybe people what go like that sometimes. <laughs> Get them out! <laughs> we didn't really think this one through, we panicked. <laughs> OK, David Williams, Rob Brighton. The answer you're looking for is the Royal Mail, who uh, introduced new measures uh, with regards to envelopes, jiffy bags, that sort of thing. The thickness and the size of the envelope now comes to bear, not just the weight of it. Wow. You were a very good boy, is what you are, Rob Brighton. What did you get? We forgot the phrase for Wormer. We put British Post Office. <laughs> <laughs> this is an Actually, when one. you say it a few times, that sounds about the British Post... Not Royal Mail. I'm going at the British Post Office and proud of us <laughs> to post some British letters to other British people. <laughs> uh, and we said... Uh, that sounds like a BNP thing now. Uh, <laughs> let's, go, let's go back to Courtney Love for the answer. The answer was the Royal Mail, who started taking size as well as weight into account for the cost of sending a letter. And it's all explained in this wonderfully easy-to-read booklet, which explains... I'm not quite sure what it explains. <laughs> Pretty much what I said. <laughs> Pretty much what I said. Well, you get a point, you get a point. No, 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 what organisation the Royal Mail? Not the British Post Office. Also known as the British Post Office. Yes. Kat, do you want a point? Yes, please. Don't! You'll have a point. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. No, no. No. A point for us is a point against racism. <laughs> yeah. In a way. Jimmy, I've been bitten by something. Possibly the scorpion or something. <laughs> it's probably just some sort of pubic louse off Russell. No. Jimmy. <laughs> I'm just saying, in all probability, oh. that is what it is. Have you had your hand down there? <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> Only for the first couple of rounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, final one. Who was wooing the hot van driver? Answers, please. We put George Wham. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't remember his second name. I'll give you a point for that. Yeah, You're but on the right also, line. we were going to write Hampstead to get an extra point, and I only managed to get Ham written down. <laughs> then the pen stopped working. Okay. So it says, George... says George Wham Ham. <laughs> You think he said when he finished, wham, ham, thank you, man. <laughs> uh, David and Rob, you look depressed. Well, we're just not playing anymore because there are no <laughs> rules. There are no yes, rules. Sore loser. We're the only people here who've got five out of five. Yeah. OK. <laughs> All right, well done. Join in. Don't yeah, be pouting. Nobody is joining in to the competition more than we are. <laughs> not opting out like these. We're having a bloody gap year in the middle of it. <laughs> And we're getting more answers right than Ross and Dealey. Well, I'm sorry, but I think the scores beg to differ, Bryden. Because right, right, this right. pale imitation of Guy is cocking it up! <laughs>
<laughs> OK, let's check in on scores. Cat Dealey and Jonathan Ross have 22 points. David Williams and Rob Ryden have 22 points. Yeah. Oh. Noel Fielding and Russell Brand oh, have so nine. Close, so close. OK, ladies and gentlemen, two truths in one for you now. Another bonus question, and to ask it, the one, the only, Boy George. <laughs> God bless you for coming in. Love your hair. Thanks. Oh, which who? Both. Thanks. <laughs> They're both good. Now, you got quite a lot of publicity uh, How was this Matt's year. wedding? All right. It was very nice, thank you. It's great you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a panto now. <laughs> Bad atmosphere here now, and I want to go home. <laughs> oh, it will be fine. <laughs> no. We're just worried in case there's a bad atmosphere, that's all. <laughs> we thought we'd go no, under there because we could trust each other. It's absolutely fine. Okay. Plus, now. I thought we could order the scoreboards with a spanner. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll definitely be able to figure that out. <laughs> the, let's, let's concentrate on this. You got a bit of media attention this year because you had to pick up trash in New York City. I was a cleaner for a week, yeah. You did it with a fair amount of dignity, I think. I did, yes. And you know what you did? You know what, that, what happened as a result of that? What? Naomi Campbell was going to have to do the same thing. And then they let her off because you'd got such a hard time from the press. Oh, bless her. Now, <laughs> I've got a question for I us. Have. Mel Gibson right. was recently drunk and made a racist comment and insulted a female police officer. What did he call her? OK, so he made a comment to a female police officer. <coughs> what did he call her? It was reported in the press quite widely. Can you use this expression? No, I'm going to start. <laughs> Who do you want to win the quiz? Who do you think? Jonathan. Thank you, George. Aww. Right, well, what have you got? Cat Dealey and Jonathan. We've got... He said, what you looking at, sugar tits. <laughs> Which is a great expression, isn't it? OK, David and Rob. Sugar, sugar tits. tits. Sugar tits. Entirely the right answer. Noel and Russell. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, if we did know the answer, but Noel and I believe it to be sexist. So we simply referred to a recent film he made, which I think, I don't know, but I think it was called The Passion of the Christ, which was about a man... Called Jesus. I believe that was his name. <laughs> OK. No, George? George, what is the correct answer? It was Sarah Sugar Tits. Marvin, will you two get the points? You get nothing, but thank you very much indeed, boy George. Yeah. <laughs> Right, <laughs> how much attention have you paid to this year's movies? Let's find out. OK, we've altered these stills from films just a little bit. I want you to tell me what film this is from. <laughs> OK. <laughs> what film was that originally from? My chin there looks like that rower's ass. <laughs> you do look good. You've found your look. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what film was that? Let's have a look at your answers. It was either you in an outtake from Confetti, or it Relaxing, was you, you, you pretending to be the Queen. <laughs> Maybe in your trailer. OK, the Queen is, is the correct answer from David and Rob. I'll give you a point for the Queen or Confetti. Could have been either. <laughs> Jimmy was not in a film, this is a trick. <laughs> a trick that we've not fallen for, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, try again. It's not a difficult trick. Like it's not a sorcerer's trick. It's just Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> I've got another one for you. Have a look at this. Tell me what film is this from? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a print of that? <laughs> <laughs> you certainly may. That's, like just, that. that's just horrible. That's Amazing. horrible. That's really horrible. Like, like a dream I had. <laughs> it isn't. Quick, quickly, write oh, it down. Quickly, 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 quickly. OK, Nolan Russell, let's go to your answer first. We think we've actually got one OK, right. let's have a look. Is it Kojak? <laughs> 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 uh, but you're bald and he's the lollipop. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do you remember when Kojak came out? Remember when the film Kojak came out this year? Do you remember that? No, because he didn't come out this year, did it? Big Fat Quiz of 1977 <laughs> might have had that question. What did you put, David Williams, I think we Ryan? got it right, and we said snakes, snakes on, on the plane. plane. 
we went with Snake. We, well, first of all, we thought Mission Impossible. We had no idea because you were bald. Then Superman, we thought you looked a bit like Lex Luthor. But that's really hard because, well, I've seen almost every movie released this year and there's no film in which a bald man is on a plane holding another tinier man in his hand. <laughs> the correct answer is Snakes on a Plane. My okay. favourite thing about Snakes on a Plane was the fact I saw, we saw a poster for it. I was with my girlfriend, Caroline, and we saw a poster for it. She went, Snakes on a Plane. She went, what's that about? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a look at the scores. Uh, Kat and Jonathan have 25 points. Mm. David and Rob have 25 points. Mm. Noel and Russell are still on nine. <laughs> Join me after the break and we'll discover how Richard Hammond rewrote the highway code this year to include the new instruction, Mirror Signal Bed Bath. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. Think of it as a subtle way to test how Granny's Alzheimer's is progressing. <laughs> Let's cast our minds back now to autumn. Madonna caused controversy by adopting a baby boy from Malawi. Already, Madonna's visit has passed into Malawian legend, specifically the legend of the scrawny witch who swoops down from the skies and takes children. <laughs> Home Secretary John Reid has put limits on the number of Bulgarian and Romanian immigrants coming into the country. I don't know, these Bulgarians and Romanians, they come over here taking our jobs, said a Polish builder. <laughs> Chris Tarrant split with his partner after having an affair. Who wants to be a millionaire? Sadly for Chris, his wife does. <laughs> Right, you ready for some questions? Yes. yes. Yeah. OK, now it's back to the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School for another topical play. What new story are they acting out here? Hello, everyone. I'm here to give you some money from my government. What's that for? Making lots of pucker food. Here's some lovely <laughs> recipes. <laughs> here is some new food. Hello, children. Look, there's my mom. Who wants some greasy chips? Who wants some bloody burgers? <laughs> OK, write down your answers. Moving on for our next question. We're going to be joined by gorgeous Carol Vorderman for a very special countdown conundrum. Take a look at this. Hello, Jimmy. I want to know if the panel can unscramble these nine letters to reveal something that Anton Deck took the precaution of buying this month. So you've got 30 seconds on this one, starting now. <laughs> My countdown dance. <laughs> okay, next question. In October, controversy raged over the wearing of full face veils by Muslim women. But what I want you to tell me is what's the proper name for the full face veil? <laughs> Keep the casual racism to an absolute minimum. <laughs> <laughs> She's got beautiful eyes, isn't she? <laughs> what else are you meant to say? I'm just <laughs> making conversation. Quite a nice thing to say, though. Yeah, she has got beautiful eyes. Yeah, it's It'd be great if we went out then it was sunny and they just put on sunglasses as well. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know where the fun was, would you? you know? <laughs> what are you up to? No, I'm just waiting for another question because I'm actually taking it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. OK. <laughs> what did these two men sell for $1.68 billion in October? October. <laughs> Is that when there's yeah. conkers? <laughs> the fact that you've asked is that when there's conkers suggests maybe you're not going to get the right answer on this. <laughs> Don't be so sure, Jimmy. We may yet surprise you and not put conkers. Or uh, we may. I've put conkers. <laughs> <laughs> the element of surprise has been removed. <laughs> conkers is what it should say. OK. Um, eyes down again because Sir Ian McKellen has another literary treat for you. Yeah. Whose biography is he reading from now? You'll enjoy this. Chapter 16, Going Solo. <laughs> Suddenly, everyone wanted me. One of the first things I was asked to do was present an award at the Brits. Brian and the lads weren't invited because they'd had a big fight with so solid crew at the awards. <laughs> <laughs> 
My appearance there got reported all over the papers because when I stood up on stage, I said I'd just farted. <laughs> but I was jet lagged and so nervous that I wasn't thinking straight. I'm always spontaneous and off the cuff, but that time it didn't work and I regret it now. <laughs> okay. So Ian McKellen there. So whose autobiography was that from? Have you all got your answers down? Moving on. Another say what you see now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what does this say? You think about that next one. I'll do this. <laughs> I like the way Noel's in a slight yeah. panic, like he hasn't revised for his exam. <laughs> oh, no, we missed one out. You can still pull this back, Noel. We've got it. We've got it. No. Okay, have you all got that? Clock. Let's have a look at some answers, ladies and gentlemen. What news story were the adorable Mitchell Brook children depicting? Uh, we think He's it was the story of, about schools, m mothers taking fast food to schools that had gone on the Jamie Oliver healthy eating program. Okay. Kat and Jonathan, you've got a similar answer? We've yeah, and Jane. they were feeding them hamburgers through the fences. Interesting answers. I'm intrigued by yours. <laughs> <laughs> These children are corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> they are trying to mislead us. Why did that one at the beginning have money? And why is one pretending to be Jamie Oliver? <laughs> For what reason? And there was invisible food. I'm suspicious of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing stinks, Carl. <laughs> we got the detective agency back again. <laughs> we'll get what? to the bottom of this. I can tell you, skeleton. You guys were absolutely right. It was the rebel mums who passed burgers and chips through the school fences in protest at the changes implemented after Jamie Oliver's healthy eating campaign. How were we went to fit that in that box? <laughs> You've got it in gist. I got it in, but, you know, <laughs> it's not easy. You're just picking fights for the sake of it now, aren't you? Yes. You, you, you try to start a fight with Boy George, and now you're picking <laughs> Jimmy Carter. He doesn't want to talk about that. <laughs> OK. Did you really want to hurt him? Let's give him a point for that, it's very good. But you, I think, Russell, you need to fill us in the background to this, OK? What? Not just being mean for no reason. David is not a mean-spirited man. No, I think all not. of us remember that time when he'd done some swimming. What he scarcely <laughs> mentions every <laughs> fucking five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Does, that's Carol had an anagram for you. What did Ant and Deck buy? How did you get on? Well, first of all, we thought they bought a nicer anus, which is interpretation of letters. But then Kat corrected me and said she thought they'd purchased insurance. On one or the other one dying. Yeah. Life insurance on the partner dying so that they could carry on. It's a bit oh. morbid, isn't it? <laughs> is it morbid or that? is it just very practical and planning ahead? Well, if one of us dies, the other one ain't carrying on with goth detectives. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> one died, a whole agency dies. Oh, have, yeah. you got a, have you got an insurance policy or a suicide pact? <laughs> We're dead. Anyway, that's the whole scenario. Yeah. From okay. beyond the grave. If one of us comes alive, we'll get insurance out. <laughs> <laughs> then it would have some benefit. <laughs> well, it's all right. Um, let's go back to Carol for the answer. And, of course, the answer is insurance. Yes, which you can buy off her on daytime TV. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's interested. Um, yes, insurance, you've got that right, Jonathan and Kat. You've got... What have you got? Life insurance. Life insurance on each other. A correct answer. You've got... Well, actually, this is rather unfair, <laughs> because, because between the first time we saw Carol Vorderman and the second time, she'd rearranged those letters. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we put there... Nyaskaru. <laughs> in a hundred years would be the correct answer. Just wait. So we want you to look into the future and find it within yourself to give, give us, us a, a point. point. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time, I'm, af I'm afraid. I, I hardly want to ask this. What's the proper name for the full face veil? OK, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> no fielding. <laughs> no, what have you yeah, gone for yeah, there? What have you put? Come on. Peep scarf. <laughs> Peep scarf. Peep scarf is your guess. That's its proper name. That's its proper name yeah. from the original dialect. Yeah. Peep scarf, yeah. OK. Now, Jonathan and Kat have gone for the only slightly less racist. The post box. But... <laughs> but I believe, colloquially, and when the, the folks who are having a bit of a laugh with each other, they say, pop the old post box on and we'll go down to the British post office. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but we also put, we've, we, we think it's either Naquib or Naquid. It's something like that. It's like a Naquib or something. Nikab is how it's pronounced. That's oh, the correct think, answer. Oh, Nikab. That sounds well fun. Well done. Burka is not, it's not the right answer. What is a burka then? The burka is the full, the full thing. Oh, OK. Did the squares get it wrong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think it was a burka? In fairness, Noel, you put peep scarf. <laughs> OK. What did these two sell? They sold uh, the website YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, you both get a point. What did you go for? I think we made it clear in the preamble that it would be a big bag of conkers. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what we've written. But Noel has then written over it, cheese cutters, to double our chance of getting the correct answer. <laughs> what do you think of that, Burka boys? <laughs> <laughs> You've made us feel so small. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Pretty worried. Next Come one. back, boy, George. Next one, All is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> Whose book was Sir Ian reading from? Kerry Katona, that was, definitely. You're absolutely right, Count Dealey, of course. Kerry Katona. <laughs> OK, and... <laughs> we, I think, Ian McKellen is describing his vision of the future. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I asked you to say what you see. What did you see? Jonathan? North Core oh, Ear Nuclear Testing. <laughs> that is wrong. Back in the okay, game. Okay, here we're, we go. We're here back we go. in the game. We're back in the game. <laughs> North <laughs> Core Ear Tests, tests nuclear, nuclear Weapons! <laughs> yes. We're back in the game. Okay, but. Noel and Russell coming from the rear. What have you got, boys? Well, the pen ran out halfway through the sentence, but we tried to write, we like you better than Guy, Jimmy. <laughs> We're trying to build bridges. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that round, let's have a look at the scores. Cat Dealey and Jonathan Ross have 30. David Williams and Rob Brydon have 30. Yes. <laughs> Noel and Russell have 10. <laughs> are you ready for another bonus round? Are you ready? Yes. Yeah, How are. much TV have you been watching this year? I imagine you don't get much of a chance, Jonathan, because, of course, you're on all of it. Uh, <laughs> first, let's remind ourselves of some of the highlights of TV in 2006. Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? I'm not going to drag this out. We know exactly the scale. It's one P. Sorry. It's TV presenter Andy Peters. Oh, 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 no, 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 some of the highlights of TV from 2006. Take a look at these. All of them did the same thing this year, but one of them did it twice. Who and what was it? Nolan Russell, I'm willing you to get something, right? How many points have we got again? You get 22 points if you get this right. Right. We can, we can do this. These are all people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can, but I don't oh, see how. Oh, we've got it. We've got Things it, you've got life. it, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Look at Williams, he's in trouble, he's squirming. Jimmy, you did say if we get it right, we could have 12 points. 22, 22, 22 points. <laughs> yes, you get it right. OK. I'm fairly confident, don't panic. <laughs> We're finished. OK, let's have a look at your answers. Cat and Jonathan? We put, they all left shows, but Nicky left twice. Left the show, and you put Nicky, that is the correct answer. Yes. They all left shows, but Nicky left the show twice. Let's go to Nolan Russell. For 22 points. This is our genuine answer. All these people were evicted, but Nicky was done twice by Russell and Noel. Yeah. 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 I think... Yeah. 22 yeah. points, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. They get 22 yeah. points. They get one more. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Cheers. They're hustlers. Oh, oh so, 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 so that woman there, Ellen the Miller. prime suspect, she was evicted from prime suspect, was she? <laughs> she get bogged down. Billy was evicted from the target, Oh, she was evicted, was she? yeah, she yeah. got evicted, she was voted out. David, OK, just take, take a moment, take a breath, yeah, and think about it. We've got another round to go, and a bonus round. They are definitely going to lose. Yeah, but it's the, it's the principle, cos I want them to lose badly. <laughs> David. We've got 22 points for that. No, you haven't. <laughs> Let's, have, <laughs> glorious Let's have a little points. look at the scores after that. <laughs> I can and Jonathan have 31. David and Rob have 31. Noel and Russell are in the lead with 32. Woo yes! All right. <laughs> and for your second TV bonus question, here's the lovely Lily Allen. Hi, Jimmy. I want you to tell me what did Jimmy Savile start 42 years ago and finish this year? Have you all got your answers down? There's no rules now. There's no rules. <laughs> okay. It's anarchy. Let's, uh, now, let's see what you've got for this, Kat and Jonathan. We've gone for... Da -na 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 Top of the Pops. And we've done a picture of Jimmy Savile to cement our deal. That's not a bad... That's not a bad Absolutely bad. correct answer. Top of the Pops, Top David and Rob. Interestingly, Nolan Russell, who haven't taken it seriously up to now, are in the lead. We've got Top of the Pops as well. Uh, they can... Yeah! Yeah! Let's have a look at the scores yeah! after that. Kat and Jonathan have 32 <laughs> points. David and Rob have 32 points. Noel and Russell have 33 points. I hate you so much. <laughs> well, Why did you do this to me? <laughs> We've tried really hard. Not hard enough, David. This ain't some prance across the channel. This is a quiz. <laughs> You've got to take it serious. Don't fuck around. Exactly. Me so and Noel. You avoided a few jellyfish. Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is man's business. How can you reward <laughs> these two? <laughs> They're adorable. <laughs> Look at them. You're like a mother putting fast food through the railings of a school. <laughs> Enough. Join us after the break to find out who will win the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2006. See you in a minute. the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2006. And so, as the deadly polonium of November enters the bloodstream of December, Saddam Hussein was sentenced to death. He was offered community service in Baghdad, but decided death was the safer option. <laughs> the US midterm election spelled disaster for Bush, which was handy as he was spelling disaster with a Z. <laughs> Desert Orchid sadly passed away this week. Fans will have a last chance to see Desert Orchid when they're feeding the cat or gluing something. <laughs> OK, like Saddam Hussein, we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our final round of questions. OK. David and Rob, can you stop sulking for a minute? <laughs> Look how happy Noel and Russell are. <laughs> <laughs> OK, first question. Daniel Craig made his James Bond debut in Casino Royale, in which we see Bond get his 00 status. What does he have to do to earn it? Really? OK. Do you think I look a bit like James Bond tonight, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the rather scary world of real spying, ex-KGB agent Alexander Litvinenko was mysteriously poisoned. Who did he claim was directly responsible for his murder? Huh? Can I just give Nolan Russell a small clue? That isn't Kojak. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just please to make it clear? let's go with our quiz? We are, after all, winning. <laughs> are they... I was going to say, are they condoms on his chest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> that clearly says something about your lifestyle. <laughs> you woke up, yeah, after, a, a, you woke up after a night with Russell. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Had, we had a lovely evening. <laughs> OK, another movie question for you. And to ask it, here's Borat. Young Samaj, there have been many movie films this year. The Queen, Superman, broke back mountains about cowboys that make a bang 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 in anus <laughs> and my movie films, which in Kazakhstan took the top spot from Hollywood movie King Kong, which had been the number one film in my country ever since it was released in 1932. <laughs> what is the name of my movie film? I'm looking for the... This has got to be absolutely accurate. OK? Very naughty boys, aren't they? It's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> 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 
we just swap jobs for a day? It'd be brilliant. I don't know if you could take the social aspect, Jimmy. <laughs> Come on, little Jimmy. <laughs> OK, have you got it? Let's move on. There was outrage over the collapse of the Fairpack savings scheme, but how did Mylene Class, who we met earlier, come to the rescue? Oh, I know. Uh, what? OK, now remember Fairpack? It was a savings scheme. It was a type of butter. <laughs> it had a man on it what could play a trumpet. <laughs> if some corruption, we'll get to the fucking bottom of it because we are goth detectives. Was it a, a real man or a butter man? He was a bit of both, no, and that's what made him so beautiful. <laughs> OK, how did Miley Class help the fair pack people? Oh, it's so sweet. You know what's so sweet is they're really trying now. <laughs> <laughs> Think of how much you'll annoy David Williams if you win. Come on, no, it's worth the try. That's what spin spurring us on. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to press on. We can really, really annoy you him. did that one ages. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just going to ask you something. <laughs> <laughs> Noel is explaining to Jimmy that a victory for us yeah, will be good for the country. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I can have any three women I want from Camden if I let them win. <laughs> any three? And he, he has dominion over them. <laughs> <laughs> OK, your time's up. We'll come back to Next you one. Minute. Which event prompted the following eyewitness comments? It was literally the Wizard of Oz. It was apocalyptic. A black roof tile speared my American walnut floating shelf. I love it when people use the word literally for things which aren't literally. If it was literally the Wizard of Oz, then there would be a fucking yellow brick road and munchkins everywhere. <laughs> it wasn't literally the Wizard of Oz. It was so, figuratively. It was figuratively. But did you see when, when uh, well, no one uh, Leona that. won um, The X Factor and they had Mylene down in Hackney with all their supporters and they went, they're literally going mental here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a terrible thing to say. I expect them to come back and find out they were hanging each other and daubing shit on their bodies <laughs> and like, just going, like, we've gone mental! There are no rules! OK, these are I'm your final answers. Let's see how you did. Come on, It's Carl. very tense. Sister, you boys are currently in the lead. Question number one, I asked you, what does Bond have to do to earn his 00 status? What did you have? Kill, kill two twice. people, not kill. one, not three, two people. Kill twice. Kill Just twice. to kill two people, kill two people. What did you put, boys? Do two killings. Also, we put in brackets, murders cause deaths. Just <laughs> so that there is a moral message. <laughs> well, in fairness, if, yeah. if he has to kill two people to get his licence to kill, the first one is a murder. Yeah. <laughs> or when he kills one, he gets his provisional licence to kill. <laughs> He's not allowed to kill anyone on the motorway. <laughs> or I, I can tell you that killing two people is the correct answer. OK, who did Litvinenko believe had ordered his poisoning? OK, boys, you put? We got Putin. So, the funny answers have gone now, you want to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we thought we'd do a bit of comedy, then come in and steal it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Putin, the KGB, that's correct, Putin. You've got Vladimir Putin. OK, what was the full title, full and accurate title of Borat's movie? What have you got? Well, we know we're close, but we don't, don't know. It's something like Borat's cultural learning in US and a make benefit glorious nation of Kazakhstan. Yep. It's something like We've that. We've got right? Borat make glorious representation of the United States for cultural benefit of Kazakhstan. Is that right? right. OK, and Nolan Russell, what have you got? Well, I wish we'd <laughs> stay with the funny answers, really. <laughs> <laughs> Borat travels to America to make benefit for glorious Kazakhstan. Well, let's go back to Borat and find out. The answer is easy. It is Borat, Cultural Learnings of America, for make benefit glorious nation of Kazakhstan. Oh, we, we just said USA instead of America. That's no. pretty good. That's no, no, close no, no, enough. Cat, Cat and Jonathan get a point for that. Oh! Yeah! Oh! They do! They got it. It was oh! a new oh! new oh! Yeah. Get it exactly right! No, they, they, put, they put USA it's instead of America. That's, that's that is so no, close enough. No, no, no. There's another bonus round. Don't panic. No, it is madness now. Oh, you're <laughs> such bad losers. Points what bad for losers that, are they? For <laughs> <laughs> Nothing for swimming the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely upset, ladies and gentlemen. This is the spirit of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. How did, how did Mylene Class help the victims of the Fairpack scandal? She auctioned her bikini for £7,000. Point to Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be bitter, Rob. That's a point to you. Well done. What did you get, Jonathan? her bikini. That's a correct answer. What did you boys yeah. put? She auctioned her, her bikini. bikini. Woo! For 
thousand pound. What does it actually say, though? You are a very cynical man, Jimmy. <laughs> Insulting to both me and him, we're trying our hardest. They agreed for Klasnost. Perhaps you shouldn't be in this position of power if you can't actually read, Jimmy. <laughs> what did you actually write? What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> Still <I'm so> <laughs> We're going back under. We're going back under here till peace comes. <laughs> You know what you should do. Come on, Jimmy, let your conscience decide. You've got the same name as that bloke in Pinocchio's brain and you're a right bastard. <laughs> you didn't get a point for that. You didn't get a point for that. You insulted him by calling him a cricket. <laughs> well, OK. Which event prompted those eyewitness comments? Have you got David Williams? Yeah, well, I mean, there's no point, is there? <laughs> well, we've got the answer right, there's no point, because we're not going to win. Well, what's the thing? You might win. North well, no, London Tornado. Going to. OK, North London Tornado well, is the correct answer. What have you got? We put Tornado in West London, we put Kensal West. I believe it was North West London. Correct. What we, have you got, boys? We put that typhoon <laughs> in one street in Kensal Rise, yes. and we drew it. That is the correct answer. It was it was the Kensal Rise to these scores. Tornado. Yeah. Yeah. No to this. At the end of that, your scores are uh, Kent Dealey and Jonathan Ross have 37. Yeah. David Williams and Rob Brydon have 36. Oh yeah. Oh, Noel Fielding Rice. and Russell Brand have 36. Teams, teams, this is your last chance at grabbing a few extra points. This round is all about uh. the best of those stories that come at the end of the news. It's our and finally round. There's three questions in this round. Okay. First one. How did unemployed artist Nick Flynn cause tens of thousands of pounds worth of damage at Cambridge's Fitzwilliam Museum? Oh, yeah, I know this. Oh, yeah, well done, Cat. We got oh. that one right. Our lead is safe. Our lead is yeah. safe. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you all got an answer? Yeah, yes. OK, let's have a look, see what you got. Knocked over a vase. He fell from some stairs and he knocked over a very, very expensive Chinese... Well, he knocked over two vases. He broke two, two, two vases. Two, two priceless vases. vases. We've got two vases. <laughs> I'm going to give David and Rob the points. I'm going to give Noel and Russell the points. I'm not going to give you the points. Oh. <laughs> OK. <laughs> the scores are... The scores are 37, 37, 37. Which is Jimmy Carr's measurements, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ladies. Big <It's> saucy. <laughs> OK. Herman the German giant made the news for being one of the world's biggest what? <laughs> this is exactly the kind of thing that those two would know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you genuinely know? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> cut, cut. OK, let's have a look at your answers. Jonathan and Kat, what did you get? I saw a photograph of a giant putting his hand down an animal's throat and he pulled someone out and saved it. It was like a dolphin or something. He was like a, lo a giant vet. OK, David Williams, Rob Brydon, people's wrong. You get nothing, but Noel and Russell... Here it is, look. Rabbit you get the point. Rabbit, rabbit is the correct answer. Oh. Oh. Rabbit. Yes, indeed. A German giant is, by the way, a breed of rabbit. And there he is, Herman. The scores, currently, as we go to the last question, are 37, 37, 38. Right, <laughs> OK, final question. What is the story behind this picture? <laughs> Oh, that it should all come down to this in 2006. <laughs> is he the new Doctor Who? <laughs> and that's his woes, and there's a new small, low-budget TARDIS in front of him. <laughs> no. OK, let's go to your answer. So I asked you what was the story behind that picture. Let's go to Jonathan and Kat. What have you got? Well, we, we, I think we might have got it wrong, but I, met, I know it was an old can of food, and we put eight food bought for their wedding many years before. I thought maybe they'd bought that for their wedding, but Kat then said, look, who would buy that for the wedding? And I said, well, have a look at them. <laughs> it shows my snobbishness and Kat's good nature. David and Rob? We got it wrong. We didn't know, OK? We're, we're interested in the big issues, not some chicken in a fucking tin. <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen watching at home, I realise you, you, may, you may be getting a bit testy now and ready for bed. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could side with David Walliams. He's having a bit of a showbiz hissy fit. <laughs> and you've got... A man found a very old can of chicken, then ate it later. This can was 50 years old or something like that. <laughs> that lady there... Could be his wife. She might, might not be. be. They, perhaps they are just lovers. The important <laughs> thing is the chicken and the point. <laughs> OK, I'll tell you the correct answer. The correct answer is, this is the story of Les Laley, 
who celebrated his 50th wedding anniversary by eating a tin of chicken that he and his wife had saved since receiving it in a hamper at their wedding. OK, so we've, what, what we've got to decide is, does the man found a very old can of chicken count? <laughs> yes! Yeah. It was 50 years, you got 50 years. Do you, know, do you know what? I think they both got it right, OK? <laughs> and no, seriously, seriously, I think they both got it right. They've both done really, really well. Give them points and let them both win, and we'll just be the losers. <laughs> Even though I swam the channel, <laughs> which no one else here has done. Or mentioned. No. <laughs> so someone on this team yeah. has swum the channel. <clears throat> someone over on that team has spread STDs. <laughs> Well, don't say someone, because they both Someone have. over here gets paid too much and has just got fatter. <laughs> I think she looks great. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's a disgraceful <laughs> thing to say. OK, the final scores. The final scores, ladies and gentlemen. In last place, with 37, David Williams and Rob Wright. <laughs> in, in second place... In second place with 38, Kat Dealey and Jonathan Ross. That's respectable. But our winners from Goth Corner with 39, Noel Fielding and Russell Brand. Yeah. <laughs> to present the trophy, Mylene Class. Boys, jump up, collect your trophy, come on over. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Mylene. Come on over this way. Let's give you the trophy. Well done. <laughs> Thank you for this trophy. We will never forget the support we've received here. Well done, you, in that bikini, love. Thank you. What a great, <laughs> what a great day. What a That's great day for us The only question we didn't get right was your bikini one. Oh, really? Because yeah. we didn't want to come across sexist. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We got distracted by the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that was a more honest answer there. <laughs> from Noel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the Big Fat Quiz the year 2006. <laughs> Thanks to all our amazing panellists and to all our special guests and thanks to all of you for watching at home. I'm Jimmy Carr. That's been the Big Fat Quiz of the year 2006. Good night. <laughs>